It feels strange to finally be in a post Falcon Heavy world. After a truly spectacular launch, multiple booster landings, and the deployment of one Starman into a solar orbit, spaceflight is back at the forefront of the public conversation, and the world is watching. The question now is what comes next? So in today's Mars update, we're going to be looking into the next generation of super heavy lift vehicles. We'll examine the future of the Falcon Heavy program, an update on SpaceX's BFR Mars vehicle, and finally take a look at the other major rockets you can expect to see in the years to come. Welcome to the era of super heavy lift vehicles. After years of anticipation, last month finally saw the long-awaited launch of SpaceX's Falcon Heavy rocket. This was a truly pivotal moment for spaceflight, representing the first time that a private company had developed and launched a super-heavy lift vehicle, a system capable of launching over 50 metric tons to low Earth orbit. If, like myself, you were one of the 2.3 million people that tuned in live to watch the Falcon Heavy launch, and then the hours of footage of Starman heading out into the solar system, I hope you too felt the sense of inspiration and excitement that must have been in many ways like watching the Apollo moon landings back in the day. But now that this impressive achievement has had a little time to sink in, I imagine you're naturally curious about what is next for the Falcon Heavy. Whilst the initial mission in February was a proof of concept, the next flight of the Falcon Heavy, currently targeted for June, will be a fully operational mission known as Space Test Program 2, or STP-2 for short. This mission for the US Air Force will lift an impressive 25 satellites into low Earth orbit. Excitingly, many of these satellites are for research purposes, and in particular I want to highlight the Planetary Society's Light Sail 2 mission, which will demonstrate the principle of using photon momentum to raise the orbit of a satellite. The STP-2 mission will also be slightly different from the inaugural Falcon Heavy launch, in that it will utilise three Block 5 cores, the final upgrade for the Falcon rocket series, as opposed to the mixture of Block 3 and Block 4 cores used for the initial mission. After STP-2, we should also hopefully be seeing a third launch of the Falcon Heavy towards the end of this year, Arabsat 6A. Both of these missions are on the light end of what Falcon Heavy is theoretically capable of lifting, which enables both of the side boosters to return to landing zones 1 and 2 following the launches. However, more taxing missions from next year and beyond will require the side boosters to instead target landing on drone ships, with the centre core expended in the Atlantic. So for this purpose, SpaceX are currently constructing a new drone ship to be called a shortfall of Gravitas to prepare for these launches, though it does remain to be seen precisely when we may see such a mission profile occur. So looking forward, what can we expect to see fly on the Falcon Heavy? Initially, the focus will probably be on heavy geostationary communication satellites, along with US Air Force missions once the Falcon Heavy has been certified for those missions. But personally, what I'm really excited for is the prospect of utilising the remarkably low launch costs to send many more science missions out there into the solar system, even within the current budget constraints of many space agencies. We're already seeing this to a certain extent with the Falcon 9, which will be launching NASA's Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite next month, the successor to the Kepler Space Telescope. The Falcon Heavy, though, opens up the possibility of rapidly sending relatively light science missions, perhaps around 2 metric tons or so, out to the moons of Jupiter and the moons of Saturn. But what I would especially like to see would be missions to the ice giants Uranus and Neptune, which to date have been relatively neglected, having only been visited by the Voyager 2 mission, and so there's so much more that we still don't understand about those planets. It is important to note though that such science missions may still have to wait for a few more years, at least before launching on the Falcon Heavy, because NASA could require as many as 14 successful launches before qualifying the Falcon Heavy to launch them. Whilst the Falcon Heavy is maturing as a launch system, SpaceX certainly won't be idle though, with the majority of their development resources shifting instead to focus on their next generation vehicle, the BFR 
or Big Falcon rocket. For an overview of how the BFR will be used to send cargo and eventually people to Mars, potentially as soon as the mid-2020s, be sure to check out my Mars update from last October, which you can find just over there on the right. Now recently, Elon Musk has offered a new update on the progress of this ambitious project. It turns out that SpaceX have already started construction on the first of the upper parts of the BFR, the spaceship, sometimes called the BFS. If things go well, then the first BFS test flights, involving going up and down a few kilometres, could occur in the first half of 2019, followed by orbital tests as soon as 2020. These tests will take place at SpaceX's new facility in Texas, which is currently under construction and targeted for completion around the end of 2018. There is also speculation that there may be plans to additionally construct a rocket factory for the BFR nearby to this launch site, as that would be far easier than attempting to transport 9 meter diameter boosters by road. So who knows, perhaps we could see a genuine rocket city starting to take shape in Texas in the early 2020s, in preparation for the first human missions to the Red Planet. Though SpaceX certainly captures the limelight, they aren't alone in developing super heavy lift vehicles. In fact, over the next 10 years, at least four additional super heavy lift vehicles are projected to come online, both from traditional governmental initiatives and from the commercial sector. One of these is the aerospace company Blue Origin, founded by Amazon's Jeff Bezos, which is frequently compared to SpaceX. They are currently developing a rocket called New Glenn, which will be a seven meter diameter, two or three stage, partially reusable rocket. Using seven B4 engines, it will deliver 17.1 meganewtons of thrust at sea level, enabling it to deliver at least 45 metric tons to low Earth orbit in the two-stage configuration, with the three-stage configuration likely to exceed the 50 metric ton requirement to classify as a super heavy lift vehicle. As you can see in this animation, the first stage of New Glenn is intended to land on a platform in the ocean after use, with an aspiration to refly each first stage up to 100 times. Whilst many people are quick to pass judgment on Blue Origin, primarily due to their desire to leapfrog from their current suborbital vehicle, New Shepard, straight to a super heavy vehicle similar to the Falcon Heavy, it is worth remembering that Blue Origin is being bankrolled by the richest person in the world at the moment, who like Elon also shares a passion for seeing humanity become a multiplanetary species. So I wouldn't discount them quite yet, especially when they're projecting a first flight of New Glenn as soon as 2020. So let's watch them and see how they do. Alongside the efforts of the commercial sector, the United States, China and Russia are each developing their own super heavy lift vehicles. The furthest developed of these systems is NASA's Space Launch System, or SLS, which will be an 8.4 meter diameter expendable rocket producing 39 meganewtons of thrust to deliver 70 metric tons to low Earth orbit when it first flies probably around 2020. The SLS will, however, continually evolve and be upgraded over time, eventually reaching a lift capacity of 130 metric tons in its Block 2 configuration around 2029. NASA envisions the SLS as the backbone of its plan to construct a space station in lunar orbit, which I have previously covered in detail in a video last year, and you'll also be able to find that on the right if you're interested. Similarly, China is currently working on the design of the Long March 9, which would notionally be capable of lifting 140 metric tons to low Earth orbit. The design calls for a three-stage rocket with a 10 meter diameter core using a cluster of four engines. Though not expected to make its first flight until around 2030, the Long March 9 will enable China to readily pursue its ambitions to establish infrastructure on the moon, as well as sending astronauts there. Meanwhile, in Russia, just last month, Vladimir Putin authorized the development of a new super heavy lift vehicle targeted to launch in 2028. Currently, all that is really known about this rocket is that it will have a lift capacity of 90 metric tons to low Earth orbit and will be based at the Vostokny spaceport in East Russia. This rocket, if and when it becomes operational, would be the spiritual successor to the super heavy Energia rocket 
built in the Soviet Union in the late 80s. And given that Russia has long been considering missions to the South Polar Basin of the Moon, and have been actively studying designs for a base there, a new super heavy lift vehicle would be ideally placed to realise such visions. When you consider that there have never been more than two super heavy lift vehicles online at any one time in history, the upcoming generation of rockets is a powerful symbol indicating that our biggest achievements in space are not behind us, but still on the horizon. So in that light, the Falcon Heavy is but the first in a new wave of launches set to finally enable our next steps out into the solar system. But what should those steps be? If you could design any mission to launch on a super heavy lift vehicle, what would you like to see? Would you opt for a sophisticated 100 ton mission on an expendable rocket? Or instead would you prefer a lighter mission on a reusable rocket? freeing up funding to develop other aspects of the mission. Do you favour robotic missions or crewed missions, a mission for science or for profit, or perhaps something entirely unprecedented? What is your dream mission for a super heavy lift vehicle? Let me know down in the comments and I'll be discussing some of your most interesting suggestions in my next live stream in two weeks time on Saturday March 31st. In the meantime, keep the discussion going down below, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video or have any feedback, please let me know in the comments down below, as I do read all of them. To make sure you don't miss future Mars mission updates, please consider subscribing in order to catch all the latest news on our journey to the Red Planet.